Welcome back. Last week, four members of President Goodluck Jonathan Cabinet, including the controversial ex-aviation minister Stella Odua, Minister of the Niger Delta, Gotse Orubebe, Minister of Police Affairs, Navy Captain Caleb Olubolade, retired, and Minister of State for Finance, Yerima Ngama. It is being speculated in some quarters that the cabinet shakeup is part of the presidency's strategy to constitute an election cabinet, election cabinet for 2015, and some other people feel it's President Jonathan's way of redeeming the image of his administration towards a second-term bid. Joining us on the couch to discuss this is Achike Chude, who is a human rights activist and social commentator. You're welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Okay. It's, your, it's your view. Let it count. You can call us on 070-8066-8014 or tweet to us at Your View TVC. We cannot wait to read your tweets. So before we move on to the cabinet, a very quick question on your take concerning the amnesty program. Well, um, it's, it's, uh, some people will tell you that the conception of uh, the amnesty was a good one because um, at the time, it appeared that the government had lost uh, the ability to stem uh, the tide of insurrection in the, in the south-south. And uh, I can tell you that most Nigerians were in support of the yeah, amnesty for a better life for mm. the people of the south-south at that particular uh, point in time. So uh, it became inevitable that uh, you had to do something to stem the tide of insurrection since Nigeria was losing so much money in terms of uh, much needed revenue to the country, which they still anyway at the end of the day. And uh, so I think it was a good thing, but uh, it has completely gone uh, all right. It has, it has um, uh, just like every other thing Nigerian, uh, you know, <coughs> nothing good seems to be coming out of it nowadays. And like somebody said, one of your, uh, those who called in or tweeted, he said it <coughs> should be, you know, there should be a time frame within which the amnesty program is sorted out. There is this thing they needed to do, train a lot of people, get them. I think it's 2015. Them rest and a lot of them have been going abroad and so on okay. and so you expect that somewhere along the line it has to end and if it continues and it is open-ended then it means it has become something else it has become a cash cow okay so cabinet this country. cabinet shake up is that a move in the right direction uh, for a government that is serious for a government uh, that is committed for a government that uh, has a direction a government that has a mission and a vision uh, they need to work with people. That government needs to work with people. Ministers are very key. The president appoints them and so on in order to, you know, do certain things. And when he feels that uh, uh, those people are no longer performing and that he needs to bring in, uh, you know, a new set of uh, people with new ideas and so on, then he changes them. He has the authority, he has the power, you know, to do that. Uh, but uh, a lot of people are looking beyond this. Apart from the fact that some of the ministers that were dropped are ministers that a lot of Nigerians had clamored for their dropping, especially Stella, uh, Stella Odua, who mm. was embroiled in a lot of controversy. People feel that she should have gone a very long time ago. Mm. And now that she has to go, and it would appear that the president resisted the pressure to remove her, obviously because she was useful to him. Now the president has other imperatives. The issue of politics of 2015. Mm. By, uh, from what Marco himself said after... Mm you know, announcing the drop, you know, that these ministers were dropped. He said that some of them were dropped to allow them to pursue their political and uh, business agendas. I would find that one personally funny. Because <laughs> I think exactly. I, I, was, I was exactly getting to that because there is no way in the constitution where it is said you could, you should let go of your ministers who have political aspirations well, for 2015. Well, if you want them to concentrate on their job and they're busy campaigning around town, you just let them go. That's can I, okay. Can I ask a question? Because um, you're saying that the president let go of those ministers judging from the fact that they weren't performing anymore. And I'm wondering, when he was giving um, the speech, he was commending Stella Odua, for instance, the very controversial minister, commending that, oh, he's, he was really happy about her work. Is it not, I mean, for me, is it not beyond just sacking them? Don't you think that they should be, you know, punished or something for all the well, issues that yeah, yeah, surrounded well, well, them? If, if it has been proven that the basis for removing them was uh, based on... Uh, Illegalities? That, yeah, on uh, illegalities or things that they had done, you know, contrary to their terms of engagement, then the president is duty bound to get them punished. And again, we must say this that whatever, pres whatever power or authority the president exercises, he exercises 
on our behalf as sure. uh, people of this country. Sure. And uh, in consonance or in pursuance of uh, the aims and the goals and objectives of the Nigerian constitution. So when somebody deviates and when somebody gets involved in uh, all kinds of illegalities and so on, uh, the president has a duty. It is not about the president's pleasure. The president has a duty imposed on him by the provisions of the constitution to do things to protect you know, the integrity of uh, the Nigerian state and so on. Mm. And so the president here, there are speculations and so on. If, they, like I said, they are removed on the basis of, uh, their, of what they had done, then we would say yes. The, 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 what the president should do is to move ahead and punish them. But we also know that nobody gets punished for doing wrong in Nigeria. Yes. Uh, it's, it's as simple as that. What will be uh, the aberration is that the uh, wrong people get punished. You understand? That would be an aberration in Nigeria. Mm. But as it is, you can do whatever you want to do. You can get away with blue mother and nothing happens. And it is said that uh, somewhere that uh, when the heart of the people is filled with, I mean, when a crime goes unpunished, the heart of the people is filled with rebellion. I yeah. just want to go down briefly again to the reason that Marco gave for them, for them being relieved of their duties. Business and pursuit of uh, politics. Okay, if you say pursuit of politics, we could agree, but then there is a misnomer there, there is a contradiction because the act of being a member, I mean a minister of the Federal Republic, is political. Yes. A lot of people jostle and hustle to get to, get there. to that position you know, of being appointed minister. Then if you say business, I wonder what kind of business is better than the business of government okay, please, in Nigeria please, today. Please hold your thought, we'll, we'll, get, yeah. we'll, get, we'll, get, we'll get back to that. Hello Joseph from Isolo. Uh, good morning, good morning everyone of you. Good morning Joseph, welcome yeah, to the show. Yeah, welcome to Jumoka. I met you on Saturday at the five years at the um, somewhere in five years. The book review. Anyway, people are looking nice. Thank you. And uh, my comment is this. Uh, to me, because I have uh, ninety percent of my love to women food and uh, but you who decide to make me review it because uh, starting from uh, I was thinking that this position that a woman is an opportunity for a change because they are mothers who should do everything possible to change the life of the children and the life of everything in this nation. But look at it from a still able from a state and other posts to what are now who are in women that are in the opportunity to start a situation, they all back the opportunity. But what I want to say man, is this. I will suggest that the government, if they want to appoint any position, they should make us know the position they want to. Oh, we lost the okay, we lost the call. Okay, so let's move on. This cabinet shakeup, how timely is it? Because critics feel this move is uh, for President Goodluck Jonathan to surround himself with loyalists and also for his 2014 re-election. Let agree? me give you a typical example of that. The Petroleum Minister. She's not going anywhere. Mm -hmm. Under her, there's there's now kerosene. There was subsidy scandal. A lot of scandals. Lots of scandals under her. She hasn't come out to explain anything. She's not even. You no, know. they've come out. She's, okay. She's oh, immune okay, to yes. shake off. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they're in talks now. They're talking. Yes. But she we've has not come seen. Out. We've not seen any action being taken. Okay. This so issue back to my really question: true. Is this? For loyalists, like is this for President Goodluck Jonathan surround himself with loyalists and for the re-election? Well, he has always surrounded himself with him, him, himself with loyalists. He has always done that, and it is. Uh, I think it's uh, you know uh, it should be based on the principle of self-preservation that mm. uh, you surround yourself with those that you're comfortable with. Mm. Uh, the problem is that uh, a lot of these hangers on, a lot of those that surround him are sometimes detrimental to his interest. And I think, uh, you know, I just go back a little bit to my literature, a conversation with, uh, with uh, Julius Caesar's uh, uh, Cassius and uh, Marcus Brutus, when, you know, in the heat of an argument between the two, uh, uh, Cassius said, a true friend will never see such wrongs. And then uh, Brutus answered him, a real friend, an enemy will never see such wrongs. What do I mean? When a man tells you, that you are the best. When a man tells you that, and you maybe you tell him that it appears Nigerians are not happy with you mm. uh, from what you are hearing, all the protests and the rest, and he says, No, sir, that everybody is happy with you. It's just a few people that are disgruntled. Okay. Hold on, I'm, I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry to have to cut it's you. About sorry to have to cut you, but we have Engineer yeah. Frank on the line. Hello, Frank. Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. Welcome to the show. Please let's hear your view. 
All right. Uh, you see, I will have, when I wanted to talk to you last time, the measure that uh, the whatever we talked today about the uh, this thing, they didn't pick my call. Uh, they are uh, now on the minister's uh, release, uh, being released of their job. Uh, Stella Udua was doing fine. A lot of people needed her job, and they formed gang against her. On the car front, I don't know why some people just hate her. She has turned around the whole airport in Nigeria. She saw me. Anybody taking over, and I have things to work on. Uh, apart from, uh, let me go back to your last question. Some people talk about the uh, uh, amnesty system being given to here, here. Amnesty to the Niger Delta was because Yara Dua needed, he needed to get this revenue coming to the federal for them to be able to make the budget. He sent Jonathan to the creek, talk to your people. Jonathan cannot do that to Nama the family because he will get killed if people don't look at thesis or religion or anything. You understand? This thing is for them to get the country going on. That is why they are giving all these handouts for Amnesty. As for we, for me, from this Niger Delta, I tell you, as far as the Kuba is now talking about making government ungovernable, this Jonathan is not giving. Because somebody has said it when uh, Jonathan was coming in and they are getting good at it, making this building of the whole country impossible for him. And now, they are starting to go and telling them now that if this Jonathan doesn't come back and an outsider coming, they are going to make it hell for him because there will be no money for budget. Okay, anyway. thank you very much, Engineer <laughs> Frank. I, well, I have to agree you. Ah, I actually have a question because, you see, you made um, a comment just before the caller. Hasn't, I mean, it's not time that we, we start to look at governors beyond whether people are loyal. We just look for the people that will get the job done. True. You know, instead of looking for loyalists, 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 because we know, truthfully, now, the people around the president, for instance, mm. they are not telling him the truth, because if they were, we'll not be where we are today. You know, so is it not time that we start looking for governance, people that would do the job, instead of loyalists? And if it is time, what can the Nigerian people do? Because when you put an engineer in the aviation sector, just because he or she knows a little of science, but they don't know aer aeronautic engineering, and then planes start to drop out of the sky, just because that person is loyal to close, you. Engineering is close, Jumoke. And eh? lives are lost. <laughs> no, no, see, what can the Nigerian yeah. people do? I, I think a lot has to do with the system that we're operating. Mm. The corruption that has become and that symbolize, has come to symbolize the Nigerian state. Uh, the fact that... Uh, uh, things are not done on the basis of merit, but uh, on the basis of uh, personal aggrandizement. Sentiments. On the basis of parochial and primordial, you know, sentiments and so on. That is Nigeria for you. And uh, until you have a complete radical revolutionary shift from the present situation in this country, we are only going to deceive ourselves. Mm. Now we are going into 2015 for election and so on. Who are the people that are going to go into that election. These are people from the old system, from the old order, True. who have benefited from destroying the Nigerian state. It will not be in their interest to make Nigeria better. Mm -hmm. Once you make this country better, all those privileges we'll that accrue to certain people that believe that the country belongs to them will stop. True. And they're not going to be there to see you make this country better so that those things will stop. But again, it's important I make reference to what the man talked about, Niger Delta and so on and so forth. The reality is this, that when that fight started, it was, from what we are told, the emancipation of the Niger Delta people. Mm. It was about making their lives better and so on. Okay. Many years down the line, even those people who were there, so, or, or, so, you know, on, so ostensibly on behalf of the people, have become multi-millionaires. Mm -hmm. yes. you, you understand? Mm. The degradation in the Niger Delta has, has not stopped. stopped. The poverty has not stopped. So <coughs> what you have is a new set of nouveau rich who have profited immensely from what is going on at the expense of their people. A day will come when these same people who had fought for them will be asked questions by those people that said they were fighting for them. Okay. You understand? How come we went into a battle, you only came and out smelling rich. sweet? <laughs> And better, why we have remained in the situation we have found okay. ourselves. Very interesting. So, what is the whole amnesty all about? Thank you. Ima, do you have something to mm -hmm. just add up quickly? Because we almost no, have I want, I want to ask him a question. What's your take on this CONFAB, the proposed CONFAB, the constitution, and the resolutions from the CONFAB? How do you think they'll be?
passed into constitution without a referendum, with the way it is now, the modalities for it. Personally, all authority in a country, in a territory, you know, uh, like we have in Nigeria, all sovereignty belongs to the people. Mm -hmm. The sovereignty that Jonathan has as the president of this country is a sovereignty that flows from the constitution of this country, that flows again from the people mm -hmm. of this country. Yes, there is the reality that we are living through now that when the constitution says, we the people of Nigeria, this present constitution does not say that because the military set it up and so on. But Nigerians, whether by their docility or passivity, have accepted it as their constitution. But we know that all is not well, and all cannot be well until you make all well. It's mm -hmm. as simple as that. And so we must talk as far as I'm concerned. We are doing a different kind of talking in this country now. Mm. The talking with the bombs and with the guns and the bullets mm. in parts of the north. That talk might spread to other parts of Nigeria. You understand? Violent kind of talk. That is not what we want. And we, want, we must always be conscious of the fact that we could have a Rwanda on our hands at any particular point in time. Okay, I, I, I think I'm going, you, to, you, I think you, I'm going you, to have you to cut you here because okay. you're almost out of time. But so let's take a few seats. Yes, Mohamed Morsi says, after the presidential panel indicted Odua, I wonder what proof again the president needs to punish her. Please act. Olufemi mm. Lambert says, I'm 100% I hundred percent agree with your guest. JJ is doing what's right, but there's some to go in his cabinet. You guys are wonderful. Uzu says, what's the essence of reshuffling when you end up with an engineer in the aviation sector? And somebody said, Uwa can't get amnesty because she isn't gun-carrying <laughs> militant, <laughs> even if she's got focus for her life. Bottom line, amnesty is a scam. All uh, right, very funny, very funny uh, indeed. All right, thank you very much, ladies, for a wonderful show today. And thank you so much, Achike Chudi, yeah. human rights activist and social commentator. Thanks for being on the show. Yeah, pleasure, thank you. Okay, watch repeat broadcast of Your View at 11.30 p.m. tonight. You can also watch us on YouTube. Just simply search Your View space TVC, and you find us and watch other previous episodes. Global statistics reports that 3,000 people die daily from road traffic accidents. Please wear a seatbelt and obey traffic laws. It saves lives. Okay? Bye for now. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Bye-bye. <laughs>